So chances are, if you're watching this video, you're looking to become a network admin or you just want to brush up on your networking skills, well, you're in the right place. I will teach you the most important tools required for this type of job and send you off with confidence. Once you complete this super easy to follow course, you will have the key to succeed in IT world. After all, knowledge is power. In this video, I'm going to talk about dynamic host configuration protocol and the IP config command and its use. My name is Kobuman and welcome to Introduction to Network Administration. And in this video series, I will guide you in becoming a network administrator and what to expect at the job and also what to expect at an interview for network administration. So moving on, let's go ahead and open up our uh, command prompt, type in CMD, right click, run as administrator. Sorry about that, that was just a pop-up asking me whether I want to run it as administrator. So in here, let's go ahead and use our IP config command and see what happens. So type in IP config space forward slash all. This will give us information about our local um, in-network adapter and also and a little bit more, a little bit about our PC as well. Okay, so here we are, starting from the top. Uh, first thing you see is a host name, which is the name of my computer. So host name is always going to be a referred as a PC name, right? So, and just briefly, I'm not going to go over things that are not related to network administration. I'm just going to go over the things that are directly relevant. And also, um, I will explain and point out the questions that you may be asked at the interview for the network administrator. Okay, so moving on down to Ethernet adapter, also known as local area connection here. So down here we just have a description, which just means it's the name of the the name of the network adapter, and below it is a physical address, also known as the MAC address. And this address is a um, hardware encoded, means it's physically um, encoded into your um, into your network adapter. So if you if you get asked what the MAC address is, you say it's a physical address and it never changes. This never changes. This is MAC address is always unique and it's never the same for any piece of hardware. Okay, moving on down, says DHC enabled. Yes, auto configuration enabled. Yes. So going back to dynamic host configuration protocol and its meaning. So dynamic uh, means it changes all the time and host obviously means the PC name as I've explained here. So host name in this case is Kobuman and um, configuration obviously means configuration and a protocol is just a protocol that it goes by, right? So dynamic host configuration protocol. And the reason I'm, I'm pointing out like this because I want to make it very easy to understand what DHCP is and what it does. And um, it's the, the simplest way is to start from the beginning, going from the word itself or the description of what it is, right? So dynamic means it changes all the time. And if we go back here, uh, which we just talked about, is DHCP enabled? And it says yes. And is auto configuration enabled? And, me, and it says yes. So dynamic means it's turned on um, to automatically configured it, it's turned on to dynamically, uh, automatically configure IP addresses by default. Now, dynamic host configuration protocol, the name itself, can be misleading sometimes because you, because you can also manually assign static IP addresses to a network adapter, and you can assign address, and you, and you will have to. For example, if you assign a static IP address to a printer on a network, which I will uh, create a video uh, about on how to do so as well in, in the future as a part of this series. Okay, so yes, it does say dynamic, and by default is dynamic, which is automatic, but not necessarily all the time. So IP version 6, I'm not going to go over that because it's the new protocol. It's basically designed so you can have a longer um, IP addresses. And the main purpose of it 
initially was because the internet was running out of IP addresses with the IP version 4 and decided to switch to IP version 6. So it's not necessarily um, incredibly relevant to network administrator position because chances are you will be sticking to IP version 4 because I can't imagine uh, the network the network size of any business that would have to use IP version 6 for a local network. Okay, so moving on to IP version 4 address, which is here, and this is our local IP address, which is it was assigned to us by the dynamic host configuration protocol, so by the DHCP server, okay, and it says here preferred, and I just want to briefly mention, you know, dynamically, that means it's also random. Okay, it can ra randomly assign different IP addresses to any host or a PC, if you will, on a network. In my case, it's 192.168.0.100, and it says preferred because it's the very first address that is um, that is configured on my DHCP server, which in my case is my home router, right? So you, you obviously know what IP IP um, your IP address is. It's your um, address all of your PC on their network. That's um, kind of self-explanatory. It's something that you should already know uh, at this point, so there's uh, really no need for me to explain what that is. Now, moving on to the subnet mask. What is a subnet mask? Basically, um, the subnet mask dictates of uh, the amount of IP address you can have in a network by creating subnets. And I will explain that in a very simple manner. So basically, right now, um, it, we're at the top level of the subnet, which is this zero right here, right? Once we run out of IP addresses, which is in this range, this will move on to a different sub network, if you will. So you can create mini networks within a network. So that way you can assign additional um, IP addresses. And this is directly binary limitation related. And if you want to look at more detail about subnet mask, feel free to Google Google it, or you can Google subnet mask calculator, and you will get into super detail. But to make it simple to understand here, especially if you get asked what the subnet mask is on an interview, is a sub network uh, that allows for additional IP addresses on the same network or domain, if you will. Okay, so if we run out of addresses here, starting here, which is very limited, by the way, uh, this is what will happen. This will change to 255. 255 0, 0.0. This 255 will change to a zero. It will switch to a different sub network, which will allow it for many more additional IP address for that network. Very simple. So um, that is subnet mask in a nutshell, right? So moving on to a default gateway. Okay, default gateway. Um, basically, gateway is just a door, a doorway to a location, and and this location just happened to be the DHCP server, right? So it basically tells your computer, here, take this path, send the communication requests through this doorway, and communicate that to the DHCP server, so they can, so DHCP can route us. Uh, route us, for example, to the external websites or the internet, if you will. Okay, so in my case, default gateway is 192.168.0.1. And if you're on a business network, this is definitely going to be totally different because they'll want to reroute traffic most likely to a proxy to filter it or whatnot. But it's definitely not going to be that. I guarantee you that. Okay, so that's what that is. It's just a doorway or, or a path for a, a, um, a guidance or, or a guide path um, to a DHCP server. Okay, that's as simple as I can explain it, guys. Okay, so moving on to the DHCP server, and in this case, this is a perfect example of uh, explaining what the gateway is. So see it says it's identical to the my DHCP server here. So very self-explanatory. The gateway is the door to the DHCP server which happens to be exactly the same as my DHCP server. So gateway DHCP server in this case is identical. Uh, very self-explanatory. So in the nutshell this is what DHCP is and how it functions and what its parts 
each individual parts do and perform. And as a bonus, I will go ahead and describe what DNS is, which is also stands for, for the name name system or the domain name service. All it does um, is basically um, translates the zeros and ones, or if you will, binary, into something uh, that humans can understand, which is a number. So in this case, uh, domain name server um, or service translates binary into something that we can read. So in this case, the DHCP server address, which is 192.168.0.1. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, this is just the first part as an introduction to this series. And in my next video, I will go over on how to add a computer to a domain and how to remove it in a business setting and what it's required of us to do. Okay, that will be all for, for, for now. Have a good one and uh, hope to see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>